Welcome to our lecture online. So here's our first example. We're going to try to calculate the currents IA, IB, IC, the line currents feeding the three load impedances and then calculate the neutral, the current coming back on the neutral, which typically should be zero, but since we have an unbalanced Y load, it's not going to be zero and we're trying to figure out what that is. So we know our equations, the currents can be found by taking the line voltages and dividing it by the impedance on each of the three lines. So let's go ahead and do that. We're given that the voltage is 120 volts, so we have 120 with a phase angle of zero for the line voltage A, divided by impedance of 20 ohms, that's 20 also with a phase angle of zero, and so therefore that would be equal to a current of 6 amps with a phase angle of zero degrees. That was the easy one. How about the next one? Well, we have 120 volts, and this time we have a phase angle of minus 120 degrees. Notice that the imbalance or the unbalanced uh, system is not because of the source. The source is balanced. That's typically the case. So we have 120 volts on each of the three line voltages, and the phase difference is 120 degrees between them. So no imbalance for the voltages. It's the impedance that's not balanced, as you can tell. And so we're going to divide that by Z sub B, which in this case is 8 plus J5. And we have to convert that. That's 120 with a phase angle of minus 120 degrees divided by 64 plus 25. Take the square root that is 9.43 with a phase angle of 5 divided by 8. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 32.01. 32, I'll just call it 32.0 degrees, and so that would be equal to 120 divided by 9.43, that gives us 12.73, uh, 12.73 with a phase angle of minus 152 degrees, and that would be in terms of amps. So that's our second current, our third current, V sub C, that would be 120 volts, with a phase angle of a positive 120 degrees, divided by Z sub C, which is 12 minus J4, which is equal to 120 with a phase angle of 120 degrees, divided by, that would be 144 plus 16, take the square root, which is 12.65, 12.65 with a phase angle of, that would be one third, it's negative, and the inverse tangent would be a minus 18.43 degrees. And uh, let's see here, when we calculate that, we have 120 divided by 12.65. That gives us a current of 9.49. It's 9.49. And a phase angle of 100 and 38.43 degrees. Now, if we're going to write each of those currents, and that's of course in amps, if we're going to write each of those currents in terms of the real and imaginary part, we can do that. So here, let's take the cosine of 152, take the cosine of that, and uh, multiply that times 12.73, that's a minus 11.24, minus 11.24, and let's see here, that would be with a minus J, take the sine of 152, and multiply that times 12.73, that gives us 5.98. 5.98, of course that's also in terms of amps. Let's do the same for this one here. Let's get the real imaginary part of that. We take 138.43, take the cosine, gives us a negative number, times 9.49, gives us a minus 7.10, minus 7.10, with, uh, that would be a plus J, 138.43, take the sine of that, multiply times 9.49, that gives us 6.30. So we have the real and imaginary parts of IB, IC, how about for IA, that would be equal to 6 plus J0 in terms of ants because there's no imaginary component there. 
So those are the three line currents, IA, IB, IC. Now what happens when we add them up? We should not get zero, which means we're going to have return current on the, uh, current on the neutral, and it will be equal to minus IA, which would be 6 plus J0. And let's put it like, do it like that. So plus IB, that would be plus a minus 11.24 and a minus j 5.98 plus and then ic which is a minus 7 so minus 7.10 and that would be a plus j 6.3 plus j 6.3 there we go we add up all three currents and that means that i sub n will have a real part of we have 6 minus 11.24 minus 7.1, and then with a minus in front, that converts that to a positive 12.34. And for the imaginary part, we have a 5.98, that's negative, and we have a plus 6.3, and we make that into a negative. That would be a minus minus j 0.32 there. all right so there's our return current obviously you can see it's not zero if we want to go magnitude and phase angle format i sub n is equal to that's really tiny so this will become 12.34 with a phase angle of 0.32 divided by 12.34 it's a negative, take the inverse tangent, it would be minus 1.49, minus 1.49 degrees. So there's the return current in magnitude and phase angle format. And that's what you need to do when you're trying to figure out the currents for an unbalanced Y load, when the impedances are not balanced, even though you have a balanced source. And that is how it's done.